This is art that not only draws our attention to how we are destroying the environment, but also shows us ways that we can preserve the earth. Exploring new techniques of paper and printmaking in his work, and reaching out to share these with other artists and community members, Steve Costell makes art that matters. Hi, welcome to Art Now, a program where we talk to artists whose work is part of our community. I'm Pat Salmon, and I'll be your host. Our guest today is intermedia artist Stephen Costell, whose artwork includes print media, handmade paper, artist books, photography, and video. Stephen has a Master of Fine Arts from Arizona State University, and he is presently an instructor in the School of Art and Design at the University of Illinois. He's the co-investigator and artistic director for Soybean Press, the letterpress imprint of the University of Illinois. He also is the co-investigator at Fresh Press Agrofiber Paper Laboratory, a research lab developing paper blends from agricultural and indigenous plant fiber. Steve, thanks for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Great. Uh, we're here in the letterpress studio in Noble Hall on campus. Uh, to begin with, uh, what led you to become an artist, Steve? Uh, you know, from a really early age, I was encouraged to draw uh, specifically from my grandmother. And interestingly mm. enough, um, it's something that stuck. And I can't recall a time in my life that I wasn't drawing. So mm -hmm. I think that it was a natural. Um, and then trying to figure out what that pathway was growing up in the industrial Midwest, uh, practical avenues seemed to be graphic design, mm -hmm. um, which I, I enjoyed. Um, However, I really felt compelled uh, to pursue more of a studio uh, practice. And I ended up going to graduate school for Intermedia where I really was able to combine a lot of my past experiences with uh, new pursuits in, in the visual arts. Okay. Uh, now, how did you become interested in printing as an art medium? So, having an undergraduate degree in, in graphic design, uh, one of my first jobs was working in a commercial uh, printing company. Ah. Um, and I worked a lot of hours um, and really became proficient at understanding commercial printing um, as well as having some printmaking as an undergraduate um, but really understanding kind of the process of how to build images through that uh, more commercial experience and then getting into uh, graduate school I was primarily interested in video but I started looking at ways to extract images from video and reproduce those images and printmaking became uh, the obvious choice for me as far as how to work with these images, especially in multiplicity. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's uh, start by looking at some of your prints. Uh, this first one is called Promise Lies. So this print uh, originates from uh, where I come from actually, um, along the lakeshore of Lake Michigan near Gary, Indiana. Uh, it's a coal burning power plant smokestack um, and a lot of the issues um, really deal with some of the things that I experienced as um, enjoying the environment as a youth, um, but reflecting on the ways that the environment's impacted by our surroundings. Um, and so this really looks at uh, the realities of uh, what coal uh, generating power plants supply as far as electricity and conveniences of life, um, but then also the realities of uh, some of the uh, particulate matter in that that are then also put out into the environment. And right. Okay, this next one is called Mail Bomb. <laughs> yeah, so this piece, it's, it's kind of a reactionary piece. So some of my art um, is very reactionary and um, almost in some terms a, a slap in the face. It's so obvious. Um, but in the early 2000s, obviously, there was a lot of issues with uh, individual freedoms and mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of scares with uh, homebred terrorism and foreign terrorism and mm -hmm. uh, so this particular piece um, it's it's a uh, model print of uh, wood type so handset wood type um, and then a, a gradient blend of color and just trying to illustrate that uh, notion of the anticipation of the unexpected mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of playing a little tongue-in-cheek um, but also just trying to play to the fears of, of contemporary society okay this one is called Panic 2. 
So the, the Panic series is um, a continuation that actually started with the mail bomb piece and, and again just trying to play with um, you know all the fears and, and anxiety that's caused through either mass media or gossip or uh, whatever it might be that right. that kind of uh, creates that that type of feeling of, of panic and so uh, some of these images were appropriated from uh, post World War II or World War II um, civil defense manuals mm. um, and then uh, manipulated, uh, recolorized, and then printed. Uh, this is a two-color piece, printed uh, photo relief on the letterpress. Okay. This one is called Sustain. So Sustain was kind of a, a transitional print um, in the way that I was looking at using photo processes and printmaking. And so this is a two-color photolithograph, um, and it's also dealing with a direct photo image uh, that I've taken and then a satellite image of the same site uh, and really looking at the way that we view uh, the built environment. Um, in this particular instance, I was on a boat in Lake Michigan looking at this uh, coal burning power plant, probably something that you couldn't do without much question these days. Um, and then the aerial view of that and kind of getting this idea of uh, the permanence or uh, permeance of structures that we build. So something that's supposed to uh, guard and, and protect um, this specific site, mm -hmm. but at the same time uh, serving as a way to guard and protect our natural resource of the lake. Um, so there's uh, emitted water that's held in a pool that uh, slowly escapes back into the lake. And so just oh. trying to examine some of that conversation. Right. Um, okay, and then this one is intake. So this is a sister piece, and this is actually uh, the fresh water intake for the coal burning power plant that sits out in the middle of Lake Michigan, uh, offshore about a mile. And um, again, uh, first person photograph at the bottom there, and then the satellite view uh, on the top. Mm -hmm. And just really looking at the formal qualities of these structures um, and the relationship um, between shape and how we uh, kind of interact with these spaces or um, how we process these images as we experience them first person. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you've also done a number of artist books. Uh, we're going to look at just a couple. This first one is Movement Through Arcana. So this book is uh, origami fold, uh, piano hinge structure book that uses no adhesive. It's just folded paper mm -hmm. um, and, a, and photolithography. So one color uh, photolithograph printed on both sides of the paper. Uh, but a really complex fold and really dealing with uh, the images that were found in this project that I participated in, which was a choreography um, dealing with uh, two different spaces where the choreographers were active. And so these images were extracted from video, uh, compiled, manipulated, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, ultimately printed in, in uh, photolithography. Um, the idea behind movements through Arcana is essentially the way that uh, images move these days, the, the uh, notion of um, omnipresence through video and, and broadcast uh, versus the ephemeral quality of the act itself. So this is a way to kind of uh, bring a sense of permanence to yeah. this experience, um, but also in a way, in a form that really complemented the experience itself. So navigating through the form is really kind of a, a choreographed motion in and of itself just mm -hmm. due to the complexity of the way that it unfolds. Right. Okay, and this next one is 30 Mile Radius. So 30 Mile Radius is a more uh, contemporary look and examination again of uh, coal burning power plants. Um, seems to be a, a topic that I hit regularly and I think that um, really being influenced by growing up and uh, being in close proximity and you know being caught in the, the gaze of watching the billows coming from the stacks and right. um, some of that I suppose uh, feeds into this. But the other thing is um, the realizations now of uh, the impact. And so this particular book was uh, kind of motivated by uh, the Clean Air Act, which was up for uh, revisit by our Congress, which I don't believe even really looked at any action on the Clean Air Act. Um, in fact, let a few things expire. So it's politically yeah. motivated um, in how we see and how we think about um, these institutions, the institution of power, um, and right. then the relationship of uh, our existence to these places. And so right. the 30 mile radius essentially is a report that was published um, by a grassroots organization that was examining the impact of emissions from coal burning power plants and the uh, 
inhibitants that were within that radius are actually the most at risk for um, issues relating to heavy metals and right. uh, dioxins and, right. and dioxides and, and uh, other chemicals. So living that, in that area really brought it kind of home to you. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And so it also um, made a lot of things a little more clear about why certain types of diseases happen mm -hmm. a little more frequently in these areas. Yeah. Um, it also has a companion uh, video piece, which is a video installation, a two-channel projection um, that is essentially a, a meditation on this particular smokestack, and it has an ambient audio track that kind of follows along with, with the video. Okay. Now, you're the artistic director and co-investigator for Soybean Press, as well as the co-investigator for Fresh Press. Can you tell us a little bit about their mission and how they interact? So Soybean Press is a collaborative project between the School of Art and Design, uh, the Rare Book and Manuscript Library, and the Graduate School of Library Information Science. And we really work to uh, bring an awareness to the history of uh, letterpress printing, uh, print techniques, um, artist books, uh, book arts, and also paper making, um, which I'll talk about Fresh Press in just a bit. Yeah. Um, but the idea of uh, Soybean Press is that we do uh, community engagement programs. So we work with like the Youth Literature Festival. Mm -hmm. um, we also participate uh, annually in uh, the art at the market through mm. the city of Urbana's mm -hmm. Farmer's Market, uh -huh. um, as well as do artist projects where we engage uh, either writers or visual artists in projects. Um, so the first piece that, that we're looking at is a broadside by Rolanda Hinojosa Smith. Um, and this particular piece uh, is printed on paper that was made with students here at the U University of Illinois uh, from combat ready uniforms with combat paper, an artist group that Soybean Press brought in. Ah. Um, and particularly fitting, uh, Rolanda Hinojosa Smith is a Korean War veteran, mm -hmm. and this particular piece is about wartime suicide. And when we talked to him about the paper that we chose to use for his broadside, mm -hmm. uh, it nearly brought him to tears just because of his own relationship as a Korean War veteran and yeah. uh, kind of the uh, idea behind the words that, that are on the paper. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that this is part of the car reading series, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, so my collaborator at Soybean Press, Martin Stromberg, had made a relationship with uh, some faculty in creative writing, uh, Stephen Davenport and a, f a few others, and we worked with the poets that they were bringing in for the car reader series mm -hmm. uh, to publish a series of broadsides. Um, so they would come to campus, uh, give a reading from their work. We would engage them then in a broadside project where we would work with kind of the conceptual ideas of their piece and try to bring that out somehow through the printed broadside of their work. Right. Uh, here's another one. This is Lighting the Tulips. So this is a Toy Derricotte uh, poem. And for this particular broadside, we used a pressure printing technique uh, where we hand cut uh, Japanese papers, which are really heavy textured. Uh, long fiber papers and then we would lay those underneath the impression cylinder when we were making the print and so the different layers of paper create uh, different levels of pressure on the print giving us kind of the gradation of the color in the background and then kind of the abstracted tulip to complement the piece. Right and I think this next picture is just showing her with that piece. So yeah that's in our original uh, press area and so we actually bring the, the poets or writers into the space and engage them in the process itself and yeah. have them experience that physical act of making to kind of complement their physical act of writing. That's great. We just have one more uh, called Perhaps the World Ends Here. So uh, Joy Harjo's piece um, particularly is focused around being around a dinner table and so we used uh, the pressure printing technique again uh, trying to get the idea of the linen um, as the background for the piece. And again, letterpress printed, um, handset type, and typically editioned. Um, and so we'll give the writer half of the edition, and then we use half the edition to kind of spread the work of Soybean Press. Very good. Uh, I know you were mentioning that you had outreach, and here are just a few pictures from some of the things you've done. This is from Art at the Market. So an artist book project that we engaged uh, kids in. So this is actually uh, part of the Youth Literature Festival. Oh, this is. Okay. Um, and we did an origami fold and so I'm okay. working with a, a child just showing how to fold the uh, structure down and then actually uh, hand binding the books. Ah, okay. So kind of teaching them some traditional skills. Okay. And there's just some... So yeah, the wood type. Wood so this is from Art at the Market. Okay. Um, and so the Art at the Market project is a lot of fun. We bring out cases of wood type. 
um, lay, them, lay them out on tables, and we engage people to come and set short type, um, kind of like the original form of texting, we like mm. to say. Yeah. Um, and so they're allowed to kind of compose a short message, or a lot of people like to see their names in print. Sure. And then we engage them through the hand printing process. Okay. And this is from the Combat Paper Project. So yes, this is uh, Drew Cameron. He was an uh, Iraqi war veteran and uh, one of the co-founders of the Combat Paper Project. And this group uh, has traveled internationally with their project, working with veterans from just about every war that there could be someone wow. still alive from. Um, and their project is really a cathartic process in a, in a lot of ways, um, the way that they engage veterans. Um, they encourage them to use writing workshops to talk about their experiences mm -hmm. and then um, they engage them in a papermaking project where they actually use their previous uniforms um, to then uh, be into pulp and then form sheets of paper which they then uh, create artwork on. And This particular uh, project was an artist book that we engaged them in as a way to kind of uh, bring their project uh, to some type of permanence because their action is, again, ephemeral. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing about the artist book, it then becomes a document of uh, what that project was. Yeah. Okay. Tell us more about your research on making paper. Uh, you do that from agricultural fibers, agricultural waste, and recycled wood fiber. Uh, Fresh Press is a project that I'm a co-founder with uh, Professor Eric Benson in graphic design, mm -hmm. um, and it was through my interest in papermaking and his interest in sustainable design that we kind of uh, started this project. And with uh, support through the Student Sustainability Committee, we were able to acquire the equipment to put together a papermaking laboratory. Um, and so through collaboration with the Student Sustainable Farm and Farm Manager Zach Grant, um, we've been using a lot of their agricultural fiber waste as well as other indigenous plants that they grow on the farm um, as a means of fiber for paper making. Um, so we've got uh, the process of making the papers, essentially harvesting, uh, macerating the fiber, or making mm -hmm. it smaller, mm -hmm. and then we actually cook the fiber. Mm -hmm. um, once we cook the fiber, we beat it um, to essentially uh, hydrate the fibers, uh, make them really small and into mm -hmm. pulp essentially. Mm -hmm. And then we pull sheets of fiber, or uh, sheets of paper, um, from the vet. And through that process, um, we're able to create a model for a, a sustainable source of fiber. And so the overarching uh, research uh, of Fresh Press is essentially looking at um, a way of generating regional vitality. Uh, so looking at uh, regional resources and how mm -hmm. those resources could be used uh, to offset um, perhaps other streams of use, in this case paper, um, where most of the paper that we use, their origins come from hardwood forests up in the northwest um, or Canada, and so we're offsetting, we're trying to look at modeling offsetting uh, carbon footprint, um, we're looking at offsetting um, non-reusable materials or materials mm -hmm. that um, are slow to uh, reproduce, and using uh, waste fibers, um, especially agricultural waste fibers, which are bountiful in the Midwest, right. Um, as well as a lot of indigenous prairie plants, they're long fiber plants. Uh, we're really trying to shape a paradigm shift with the way that we look at uh, paper fibers and how we consume paper. Great. We have a few more images here. So the different varieties of paper, so each different fiber has its own set of characteristics. Um, we also work with blending recycled cottons in with some of these to control or to alter some of those characteristics. Um, we've been working with uh, different ways of printing the papers, um, so through your standard inkjet printers on your computers and laser printers. Um, we've been uh, having good success with having uh, images printed from commercial uh, digital printing and we're really trying to look at modeling kind of a, a micro mill um, type of presence where we can start to produce paper at a much higher rate yeah. um, and try to actually integrate it more into the, the consumer stream. Uh, some of the Studio shots are representative of our workflow, um, and so once the paper sheets are pulled, uh, we actually press them under pressure to force the water out, force the fibers to bond, and then we put them into a dry box and let them dry for about 24 hours, and then okay. they're usable. Uh, we also work a lot with recycling cotton, as I had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. and being a printmaker, um, you generate a lot of wasted paper doing your proofs and working up to what your addition is going to be as well as being an educator and working with students who also 
use a lot of paper, and so right. we're looking at ways to uh, bring that paper back into the cycle and reuse that. And so it really works out nicely with altering some of our uh, agricultural fibers and yeah. uh, adding some structural integrity as well with the cotton. So some of those might have been from students in the art department? Or? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. So from Fresh Press or from uh, the drawing studios or yeah. the printmaking studios. Yeah, great. Okay, uh, now in your own work, you've used pulp printing as a new method of creating monoprint images. Uh, and we've got a few examples here. This is brick wall triptych. So the model printing um, is really looking at using a simple stencil technique uh, that's very similar to like screen printing, for instance, um, as well as uh, a way of working with pigmented pulp that's very much like monotype printing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot more free forming, um, but it's not necessarily working with ink, it's working with pigmented pulps. Mm -hmm. And then those pulps are um, kind of interlaid while the paper is being formed. And then once you're kind of completed with your manipulation, you press and dry the paper and it becomes one uh, contiguous sheet of paper. Yeah. Uh, this next one is called drift. And so different ways of manipulating the surface. Um, this one doesn't really deal so much with the stenciling process as much as um, kind of active manipulation of the pigmented pulps. Mm -hmm. And so um, also capitalizing on something that's called the paper maker's tear. So in the process of paper making, uh, you really don't want to drip water onto your sheet because ah. it creates a uh, very shallow uh, translucent area. Uh -huh. um, but working with these veils of pigmented pulp and layering these, it actually becomes kind of a, a visual element that you can incorporate and play okay, with. Okay, so, so those white areas are actually purposely kind of dripped on there. Right, correct. Okay. And to kind of, again, look at um, that notion of water and water use mm -hmm. and the way that we interact with water. Right. Okay, uh, our next one is called South Shore. So South Shore is another piece that's uh, loosely based on the contour of the southern shore of Lake Michigan mm -hmm. um, and dealing with that juxtaposition of um, land versus lake. And in this particular piece, the images are reversed. So what we see is water is actually um, land from probably um, oh, around South Bend all the way up through uh, the north suburbs of Chicago Mm. Uh, around the Great Lake, and it's kind of also turned on its axis. So what we see, we that's want to what read I was just going to say. Yeah, <laughs> as um, north is actually on the left side, or what we might read as as west as yeah. we look at the image. Okay, most recently you've used some other new techniques, and this one is love hate, the relief. Uh, that's a relief blind stamp. You so, want to explain that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the relief blind stamp is essentially a, a way of printing without ink. And this is also a segue piece between some of the uh, flat uh, monoprint style uh, paper pieces into the uh, more uh, sculptural pieces that I've been making lately. Mm -hmm. And so this particular piece is formed from a really thick sheet of wet paper. So right after it's been pressed, um, lightly pressed, so it's still uh, real thick, probably about a quarter inch thick, mm -hmm. um, but soft and permeable, and then I'll lay that across the form. So in this case, it was a handset wood type on the letter press, and then uh, pressing that paper down onto the form, and then gently kind of peeling it off and mm -hmm. leaving that impression uh, right. into the paper. Okay, and this one is love letters. So. <laughs> Uh, that's pigmented pulp stencil. Correct. So Love Letters is um, part of this ongoing series um, and actually uh, a piece that uh, was really pivotal and a piece that I had for Sky Gallery last mm -hmm. year. Um, but this particular piece again works with the pigment uh, stenciling process um, and kind of dealing with how we uh, communicate and how symbols hold meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then most recently you've been using paper to cast the surfaces of public spaces. Uh, using pulp fibers you've kind of captured the qualities of such as joints, textures, imperfections in uh, pulp, in these pulp surface prints. So uh, here are some of those pieces. Yeah, so these works are uh, my latest body of work and actually uh, quite a bit of fun and so really informed by um, the earlier piece, the love-hate piece, and mm -hmm. looking at ways to use um, surfaces without ink necessarily um, as a way to generate imagery. And so uh, I became really interested in the built environment as we talked about in some of the earlier work. Mm -hmm. and this is much more of a direct way of interacting with that space and particularly with public space and how we use and, and experience public space 
um, but then as a visual artist, really looking at a different way of engaging that space. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using um, like parking lots and sidewalks and, and things of that nature uh, for their formal elements, a lot of the linear elements that are found or things that happen um, over time, like chips in concrete or mm -hmm. um, you know, dirt that builds up that changes the contour. Um, and so I'll actually put a form down on the ground and pour a pulp mass into the form. And then I press that, um, kind of pushing the water out of the fibers and forming the sheet of paper on the site and using the environment essentially as a matrix, uh, much like we would use a copper plate for intaglio printmaking. Right. And so pushing the paper down into those grooves to capture those images. And then instead of using ink, uh, really relying on that play of light and shadow to form the image for us. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to make that impression? Uh, so it's probably about a half a day by the time you uh, pour the pulp and you're able to peel the piece off because okay. you really have to wait for a lot of the water to run off so that it's solid enough that you can actually then peel it back off the environment. Right. Um, since it's uh, you know, a very water-based set of fibers, it's really fragile until a lot of that water escapes and the fibers have an opportunity to start to bond. Okay, and I think we have a couple more images from that. And so just really examining um, different type of surface. And then the other interesting thing about this process is that I let it air dry without pressure. Mm -hmm. And so it causes this artifact called cockling, mm. uh, which is essentially the fibers drying at different rates. Oh, okay. And so it kind of pulls and contorts the surface of the paper. Um, and it creates more of a, a three-dimensional uh, relief form, which really starts to take on its own reference to the landscape and right. loses its direct connection with perhaps the, the concrete or whatever right, surface it is. Right, the original surface, yeah. For those in our audience, you can see a number of these pieces from now until the end of October in Urbana City Hall, uh, where Steve's work is featured as an artist of the corridor. Well, thanks very much, Steve. It's been a great interview. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Uh, and thanks for watching Art Now. Our guest today has been Stephen Castell. If you're interested in learning more about Soybean Press and Fresh Press, go to their websites at goillinois.edu uh, slash soybeanpress and freshpressillinois.edu. We hope you've enjoyed today's show, and we also hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make your own art now.